Hello everybody, welcome back to Gruesome's Garage. Um, been a bit since I made a video. Uh, the last one was on the Pontiac uh, 500 557 blocks. A couple of things are happened. Like the Gruesome and Dr. Frankenstein's Laboratory, this channel's had kind of a little bit of a comeback of life lately. I made a comment on another YouTuber, and he has a discovery show, named Bad Chad. He found a 36 Terraplane in Nova Scotia and was bringing it home and um, you know basically he's a customizer um, and I made the comment on the channel it was a debate on whether to keep the car original or to customize it I hope he keeps it original at the end of the day it's his car he can do whatever the hell he wants with it but there's not a lot of 36 Terraplanes out and a lot of the customizations I've seen of 36 Terraplanes don't look good um, Chip Foose who's I usually love his work but he did a 37 terraplane or 36 terraplane pickup a few years back, and no, nah, it looked ridiculous. Uh, um, blower uh, sticking out of the hood, and it just it wasn't a good looking job in my opinion. So, but that's my opinion. But making that comment on that channel, I picked up a lot of subscribers. Thank you for coming to the channel. Thank you for subscribing. We're glad you're here. And what I'm going to do in the near future. I'm going to make a video on the history of Terraplane from 1932 to 1938. It'll be basically I'll go through each year. I grew up around Hudson products, that's what my dad was into, and I will give you a little bit of information. I have a lot of reference material for those cars, and you know, I think people will like it because there's obviously some interest in that brand again, and I'm glad because Terraplane was a significant automobile and it deserves to be remembered. Now, Today, though, we're going to make a video about the Pontiac Firebird that I'm restoring. I recently went on YouTube. I got to pull the front end off the car, the bumper, grill, uh, front fascia. And I said, well, I'm going to go on YouTube and see if there's any videos of uh, people doing that. There were a lot of videos. However, nobody went through step by step. They already had the uh, front end pulled off the car. And they'd say, well, you know, I didn't want to follow around with the camera, so I'm just going to go over what I did. This is YouTube. This is showing people how to do stuff, how things come apart, how things go back together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video. We're going to take the front end off the Firebird. We're going to go through a step-by-step, bolt-by-bolt. And yes, it's going to take me all day to make this video. But, you know, for my subscribers, nothing's too good. <laughs> but I definitely would like to uh, have you watch this video once it's complete. And like I said, I will get going with the Terraplane video. I changed industries. If you've watched my previous videos, I said that. I am in the power industry now, specifically the nuclear power industry. I have what they call an outage coming up. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to be tied up with that. So I'm not going to be making any videos, doing too much or anything other than working. But when I get done with that, I will make a uh, Terraplane-specific video for you. Now, um, with that all said and done, let's get the job at hand. We'll go through step-by-step um, step what we've got to do to get the front end off this Firebird. And then we'll come back later on and get the whole front clip off it. The fenders, inner fenders, all that stuff. Get it right down to the subframe. So, hope you stick around. Okay, now I've said this before and I'm going to say it again because I want to drill it in your heads. When you're taking a uh, car apart, or anything, a motorcycle, snowmobile, your lawnmower, whatever you're restoring, tractor, you want to have stuff to mark parts. These tags come in handy, these little decals. Um, I'm going to show you something else I use. These lunch bags, uh, I get these at all these. You can't beat the price. You probably can get them at the dollar store. They don't have to be hefty bags. They just have to be something that can hold parts. Parts in the bag, label on, Sharpie marker. Paint pen's also your best friend. A notebook to diagram stuff, make measurements, write down measurements. Um, I'm going to show you a couple things on this. If you look here, you'll see there's a shim here. You want to make sure those shims go back where they came out of. Because if not, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to line the front end up when you get it back together. One thing too is if you're changing these bushings out, there's like rubber bushings, you want to make sure you get measurements of those gaps. Because that's going to affect how the front end goes back together too. So first thing we want to do, and something like this, and this is basic, but I'm going to make note of it. You want to make sure 
disconnect your lights. And underneath you'll see the parking lights. Uh, we'll get down there and get those. There's also the horns. Your high and low horn. Make sure to disconnect them. Okay, I've uh, put penetrating oil on some of the bolts. One thing I want to make you aware of, where the fascia meets the fender, there are a couple of bolts in there. I'm going to try to get the light in there so you can see them. But they are a 5 16 bolts, which means they have a half inch head on them. And basically, you're going to have to get those off. Let's see, it's really tough to kind of get the camera to focus in. But, um, you just see that one down there. And there's one up here. It's kind of hidden. But you want to make sure you get those out on each side before you try to take the front fascia off. So we're going to work on those right now. Get those out. I've got everything hooked, unhooked electrically. The parking light turn signals are a twist socket. So keep that in mind. You give them a little twist, they pop right out. So let's see if we can get these out. Fortunately, I got to do these by hand. There's no way to get any power tools in there. It's kind of a t tight spot. That's why you could easily forget these. And then you'd be yanking on that face, you're thinking, why won't it come off? There's one of them. That's what the nut looks like. We got our bag, fender to, fender to fascia. And since these are obviously the same right to left, um, I don't need to make individual bags. The upper one's going to be a little tougher. Just want to make sure you get these good with penetrating oil. These faces are fiberglass and what will happen, it happened to me on the deck spoiler, is you go to take these out and they spin in the um, fiberglass. And that makes it a lot more fun. And this one is being a little stubborn. The biggest problem is if it doesn't come off, it's very confined space. I'm going to pause the video for a second while I try to get that out of there. Okay, we got those off. We were able to get them from underneath with the air ratchet, which helped, like I said, make sure you soak them good with penetrating oil, because if you don't, what's going to happen is they're going to break off inside the fascia, and then you're going to have a real hell of a time getting them off. I'm going to leave the bumper horns off for right now, so we're just going to take the fascia of um, outer bumper off. So, we got right here, we got, again, two bolts for the 916's head. They're actually more of a speed screw than they are a bolt. Let me drop that one. So the baggie's your best friend. Oh, that was not a good idea. I twisted that. So what we're going to do is straighten this out, fix it. This soak goes with penetrating oil, but apparently not enough.
I uh, just I believe I just did that. Oh. Actually, what we're going to do is hit them with an impact. Get those off and we get the uh, big shit off. Taking this off, huh? Okay. Makes me a little angry, but what are you gonna do? Things happen. Alright, get that all bolted. your front fascia and we will move the bumper here in a minute see we've got the uh, bracketry and stuff still here so you know where everything goes just like I said what I did was I got under there and actually took some pictures of this so I know the orientation when it goes back together that's another thing taking pictures is your best friend especially if you got a nice little printer you can print them out put them with the notebook Normally I'd get the electric impact out for this, but I already got the air going, so. And that's not gonna work. Okay, I'll have to get a shorter socket. Because we're using a half inch, make sure you're using uh, eye protection. Like I said, make sure your soapy's down good. tight and confines down there so what's happened is the impact's actually backing up into the car so they're loose we'll just take them off of the ratchet And while you're at it, please hit the like and subscribe button. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Um, we've got a lot of subscribers in the last few weeks. I'd like to keep the channel growing. It's kind of reinvigorated me on getting my butt out here and making these videos for you. I do enjoy doing it, but it is time consuming. See, some of these people have um, helpers. They have wives, significant others, 
uh, kids that follow them around and film them. I don't have that. I'm doing this all myself. So I have to set the cameras up and do all these work. So it does take some time to get these videos set up for you. Everything is in the way here. <laughs> I'll make another video. We take the horns off. And I'm not talking about these horns, I'm talking about the bumper horns. Facial office, these are easy to access from the top. This bumper is not in the best of condition. Um, I do have to do some work to it. Pontiac, this was the uh, first year they went to this uh, urethane front, a complete urethane front bumper. 77, they changed the fascia, they went to the uh, square headlights here, bandit. Trans Ams have them that everybody seems to be in love with lately. But 76 was the first year that they went to this uh, full year of thing from bumper. The 74s and 5s have like a rubber strip on them. And of course I can't get the ratchet in on this, so we're going to have to take this one off the old fashioned way. Adjust the camera down a little bit. And this is how you remove the bumper on a 1976 Pontiac Firebird. And I'm sure it's pretty similar to the 77 and 78s. 79, it's a whole different front end, so you're on your own. Thank you for watching the video. Have a great day and God bless.